Hey everybody, I'm Brandon with Fold Up Games. We're in the middle of doing a series of making a procedural dungeon, much like my game Dungeon-esque. If you haven't played that yet, you can play it for free on itch.io and see exactly what the system will do. Let's take a look at what we're doing so far. Boom. We've got a dungeon system going up, and what I want to do in this one is go ahead and add walls around this. If you're using this system for an automatic island kind of a thing, it would be cool to, to do that as well. I've done that, and it's lots of fun. You could do a beach kind of a looking thing uh, instead of walls. And I've got mine styled to look sort of like desert kind of looking tiles. You style yours however you like. Let's jump into it. So the first thing that I did was I want to make a wall and it's just again a 32 by 32 and it looks like a wall sprite. Don't spend more than like 10 seconds on your art at this point. You don't even have a game yet, right? You remember my advice from before? So what we're going to do is we're going to be kind of going to be kind of brutal with this. There's a more slick way to do this like we could do four loops and everything, but what we're going to do instead is just sledgehammer this thing. I think it's really important when you're making a video game to just make it work and then later on make it pretty, make it slick and improve it. But what's the point of making your code slick if you decide you don't even like what it's doing or you don't like the gameplay? So just make it work and then make it better later on. What we're going to do is after the iterations are done with that for loop to create the tiles, I want the tiles to check just like we do on the, the direction right, up, left, down. See if the space is free. If it is, make a wall object, okay? So that's all they're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and put that as the end of the for loop. So let's go ahead and jump in and you'll see what it, what it does. Cool. First of all, I'll just write the code. We will start writing, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. we wanna do this with the, uh, with the um, tile object actually. We'll let the tile objects do this. Each one of them are gonna do this. So with means hey, every tile object is going to be running this code. With the tile object, we want to say, similar to what we're doing up here, if the direction or if the place and all that stuff is free, we want to check the same thing again, like this. If place, place free x plus width y, okay, we will have it create an instance of a wall, like the same way that we've done it already, x plus width y uh, depth of zero and we'll have it make an object wall okay this will give us an error by the way the reason it's going to give us an error is because when you use width like that it means that the tile object is running it the tile object is saying what the heck is width i don't have a value called width the value of width is over here on the builder object so we could do a couple of things we could let the tile object get its own value of width, or we can pick it up from the builder object, whichever way we want to do that. Um, we could just write it, we, we can write it to the builder object. We'll say, oh, oh, build, I can type, I can type, you can't prove otherwise. Um, <laughs> we'll say, oh, builder dot width. In GameMaker, if you have a dot after it, it means that that variable belongs to the object you just said. So the tile object is going to check with the builder object to say, hey, what's your width? That way we only have width in one place and it's right there at the beginning of the builder object. Cool. This is going to be a little bit clumsy. I already warned you. It's going to be a little bit clumsy, but it will get the job done. And I am much more interested in getting the job done than I am in making slick code. So what we have to do right here is say, if there is a free place of X plus, it'll be 32, uh, go ahead and make a wall object at X plus 32. Now, this is needing to run in this for loop after it's done. So let's go ahead and fill out the other directions. You go ahead and type them up. It's going to be x plus, x minus, y plus, y minus. You type and I'll type. All right, we've got it. That was a little clumsy. Uh, it's x plus builder width y. We'll go ahead and make an object at x plus builder width. x minus, x minus, y plus, y minus. Woof! Okay, now this should work, but we don't want it to be just floating out here. We want to go ahead and put it within this for loop after it stops, after it's gotten the break. So the trick here is to figure out 
what we're going to do and where we're going to put it, what makes sense in the code. Well, code is read by the computer from top to bottom, so we want to do it before it gets to the break. The break is the last thing. It stops. So let's go ahead and create a whole uh, squiggly, squiggly brace area up in here. So it's going to run all of this code all at once, and we'll take this whole block of code, and we'll drop it in here into this new sub block of code so that we don't go absolutely crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and indent that out so we can really see what it's doing. So what it says is, if the instance number of our tile objects has passed the size, which it's already doing, we don't have to think about that anymore, we're going to go ahead and make all of the tile objects create walls, then it's going to break in order. Let's see if it works. It did not work. <laughs> I think we put our break at the wrong place is what it is. There we go. Let's try it again. Sometimes there's a little bit of troubleshooting. Oh, I had that break on the outside of the code. That's why we like to indent things as well. Okay. If the instance number is greater than that, then we'll run this and we'll also do the break within that same moment. Otherwise, it just runs at once and stops. Try it again. There it is. Writing code is all about trial and error, and sometimes you're just like, oops, I did it wrong. Great. We still have a builder object. Do you remember it's kind of a kind of a half opaque thing there? Let's go ahead and have it destroy itself as well. Let's go ahead and say goodbye, builder object. We'll say instance destroy. You don't have to fill in that argument. It just assumes itself. Destroy itself in that case. Boop, and it's gone. No more builder object. Boop, 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 boop. Now you might be wondering what do you do with this next? Well, that's where your gameplay is gonna happen and you're gonna wanna set up your camera systems and a player object, but now you've got an object for your player to bump into. If you wanna be a little bit more out there, a little bit more slick about the way you're doing this and you wanna get these corners filled in as well, what you could do is to get a kind of for loop for that as well. I'm not going to instruct you on that one. I want you to figure that one out. What you might try is a, a helper AI tool like a chat GPT. It can actually answer stuff like that. It tends to be a little bit verbose, but it can be helpful for stuff. It cannot carry you or fix everything, but it can get you in the right ballpark of how you'll write the code out. But we could ask it to write code for a three by three grid around a tile object and a for loop, and it would do that. Otherwise, you could figure out some other ways to do it. But I think that's enough for uh, this iteration. Now, in Dungeon-esque, what I have, and I hope you'll play it, if you'll notice the game sometimes has long hallways and sometimes it's more compressed rooms, that's because it doesn't run that in that for loop. It doesn't necessarily change direction. It has an opportunity in there with another variable to say, well, maybe change direction. That's a bit more advanced than I want to get into in this video. But if you understand what we're doing and that makes sense to you and you feel like you can apply it, then that's a little hint to get you going. For everybody else, I hope this has been helpful and I hope you'll sub to the channel. And as always, I hope that you will be awesome.